Yeah, the window. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, Lance did say he wasn't going to be able to make it, so he did respond. And and Joy Bertinger said, I, I don't think I'm on the committee. How come you sent me an email about this meeting? <laughs> That's one way to see if you can get someone to join. Right? Yeah, I'm just going to keep trying. Okay. So, Apparently, we need to approve October minutes, and um, so our October minutes said that Lance was going to talk about moving the dedication of trail to under River Park, and then Ryland updated us on Zumbro Water Trail, waiting until after the first of the year to hear back if we are to be considered. It would be in a 2024-26 biennium budget. Um, we don't, we didn't have much for reviewing city council minutes, but the update on NADOT news near highway 52, um, we're waiting for an appraisal of land. And then what, what is the NA? NA, what? you said NHB or DOT. Department DOT, of Transportation. sorry, when you said any, uh, that's okay. You're that's like, okay. What? Got it. Got it. Okay. What? Is it, cause I, are you going to bring up the new transmission line? Yes, so right now I'm just going over the minutes and we can approve right. them. Yep. Yes. Um, and then Kane did say that he's going to, he's discussed planting trees this fall, but we have until next summer to finish that for EAB. And then Don and I are working on different things for the community center. Um, so we can talk about that. Oh, that noise is gone. That's good. Um, Alice Park. Um, we continue to talk about garlic mustard removal and music in the park. Um, we're still trying to decide if that would be us or someone else in the future. Garden Park was unusable this summer due to construction, so hopefully we can change that. River Park suggestion to name the trail under the bridge onto Garden Park in memory of Charlie. Is it fried? Fried? Fried. 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 Right. Does his family still own a house by you? Yeah, his daughter. One of his daughter. Right. Was, first of all, still live there. Yeah. Very okay. nice. Yep. Um. And then we're we're trying to develop a process, you know, for for to suggest Don and Dana suggested taking a page from Outstanding Citizen of the Year. Um, we'll bring back a process to the November meeting. Of course, that didn't happen, but using the Outstanding Citizen of the Year award as a template. So that's an idea. And then the electronic message board was put in at Memorial Park. And then we would come again November 6th, but I don't remember why we didn't meet in November and December. I know why we didn't meet in January. And so here we are in February. It was too hot in December. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, exactly. All right. So um, would anyone like to make an, a motion to approve the October minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the October minutes. I right. second that motion. Fantastic. All right. All in favor? Oh, yeah. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Oh, same side. Okay. Thank you. I don't know why I think about this. I, I got it rattles off in my head. Yeah. Okay. Um, are there things that we want to add to the agenda? I believe I didn't put down. What is this group called again? Uh, the Wild Ones. Yeah, so wild ones is something I want to discuss mm -hmm. that would be um, during the community center. Mm -hmm. And then Orinoco Park, we would like to discuss, um, what was it, XL Energy you said? Something like that. Anyway, it's okay. It's transmission line. And then... I was... I was sorry. That's okay. <laughs> you were what? I can't believe, but I mean, I, it just seems like it would be big. It would be a big concern. So maybe it's a no go or something. But anyway, I, I yeah, just, we'll have to ask Riley. When, when I read it, it was like, what? Yeah. All right. And then um, I guess I could look at my form for the agenda that I did come up with. All right. So. Riley. Are you are you good to give us a Zumber Water Trail update? Oh uh, yeah. So okay. um, 
the bill is being uh, the LCCMR bill bill is being formulated to go to, to uh, the legislators on I think February twelfth is when the session opens up. Okay. So we had a, a request to uh, from LCCMR to uh, just update the work plan a little more detail uh, by a certain time. We had like four days to get to answer their questions, I guess. So um, SCH Engineering answered those questions and. And so that we met that deadline, so it's progressing, and looks like it'll be in the language for the bill, um, for the legislators to review, and hopefully approve. And uh, the funding will be available sometime after July of this year. So, oh, wait, the funding is for okay. one hundred seventy thousand dollars for able to use, and a lot of it is some of it's used for. Um, uh, the main focus is to set up a joint powers board between elected officials and residents and SEH as we put that plan together and how we go about getting that. So we'll be engaging, we'll start having some meetings. We only have about a couple thousand dollars left of current funds from the county to use between now and July. So it's gonna be kind of quiet, but um, after the that first of July date, hopefully it'll pick up. So things are still progressing, so. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, mainly for city council stuff, I would say that Paul Pendergrass as our representative is the main thing. And then is there anything else from the city council that you would like to pass on? Well, we interviewed um, candidates for city administrator oh, last okay. Tuesday and Wednesday. And so we're still waiting for responses back from the candidates. Hopefully we will be finalized this, uh, this week. That's exciting. So we, we interviewed we hired a, a company from uh, Mankato, North Mankato, called SC, SC South Central <laughs> Services cool. Corporation. Sounds okay. So, so I think that's what it stands for. <laughs> right, right. So they're a consultant firm. Uh, Byron, Minnesota used them here recently. And so we uh, they posted through the month of, um, starting December through January. And we, so they came to us with four <laughs> candidates last Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, Tuesday was uh, staff um, talked to the four candidates that evening from 5.30 to 6. There was a community engagement for people to come in and talk, visit with them. Quite a few people did. Did some people come? That's great. Yeah, it was a good turnout. Right. Um, and then we had the interviews on Wednesday and um, selected the candidates and we're just going through those now to see who's offering and declining. So. Okay. We'll hear something soon. Fantastic. I am curious. The people that are doing the survey with the economic development. Yes, EDA. Yeah. Um, the, the last name, Charles? Yeah, Rachel? Rebecca Charles. Rebecca Charles. Right. Rebecca Charles. Who, who employs her? Uh, she's the CETA representative. Uh, that's part of our EDA. CETA is a company. Uh, or is, they're based out of Chatfield, and they're in. We're about one of the last cities in Southeast Minnesota to have a economic development authority, and um, so to operate the economic development authority, we have uh, uh, Paul Pendergrass and myself and five um, residents. Is a seven-member board. We're short one right now, and we'll be interviewing for candidates in um, early March to replace that vacancy appointment at the March council meeting. So um, the CETA representative, which is a community um, economic, no, community economic development associates are based out of Chatfield, nonprofit. And so we hired uh, a representative from CETA to be here one day every week uh, going forward. So she's part of our CETA effort uh, to help promote economic development. Um, both for the citizens and also for the businesses, both economic and or commercial and residential. So part of that first initiative is uh, setting up some bylaws. And um, so we'll be approving those at our March meeting, uh, our February meeting. And the EDA meeting is of course open to the public at all of our meetings. It's the fourth Tuesday of every month at 6.30. And uh, so part of that initiating process is to put together a, a community engagement plan so um, she put together the survey. It's a Google survey to 
to 606 uh, properties, business and residential. And so she, we bailed all those out. You could either fill in electronically or return. And so we're getting a pretty good response, both mailing back and um, um, the QR code electronically. So the Google survey, once those results comes in, she puts them into the spreadsheet. Google has a software that will spit back the results. And so we'll be using that to help with our planning, um, comprehensive planning, um, to share between uh, the CETA or EDA and also the Planning and Zoning Commission. And so there's just a lot of good feedback coming back from residents. Okay. So, Did you say that was the second or fourth Tuesday of every month? Fourth Tuesday. Fourth Tuesday of every month. Yes. At what time? 6.30. Um, so she's our executive director, um, and she's just getting started. We started this in uh, it was October, November of last year. And is she housed upstairs, or where where is she? Uh, she has a desk upstairs. Right. She's at a desk, yeah. So, sure. and, uh, is she serious? Does she share that space with anyone else up there? Or not anymore, right? Because there was a uh, Renee's up there both once in a while. When we hire a city administrator, and we're also hiring a uh, part time administrative assistant, so they'll be in the office, and Renee will be back upstairs where she was for a while, too. So, what's so it's kind of exciting? A lot of things to come out of that, and yeah, the survey tells us, too. Okay, all right, and she's also touching base with all the business owners in town. Uh, kind of introducing the EDA to them as well. Any of their needs or anything like that. So yeah, probably include now is it two new businesses by gas and go or are there more than two? Uh, there's two. There's a two sisters restaurant just to the north. Okay. And then the motor coach, Glenn's motor coach is, is building the building across the street. Okay. And that's a company that just takes people on tours, right? Right. Yeah. They uh, okay. right now they're located off of west on highway 14 west of Rochester where the John Deere dealership is at. Oh. A bunch of buildings there, and they're in the back, towards the back. And I think, uh, and that's going to be a new interchange in the near future too. So, west okay. west of Rochester or up here? West of Rochester. Okay. Fourteen going west towards Byron. So they kind of had to have to move. Had to move. Yeah. So they just. So that's good for our local. Mm -hmm. That's good for our local. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yes. Well, I stopped by. Talk to the guys who were hooking up the electrical from the co-op and visit with them, and they said they're already they're already going to double size that building. They're going to go, they're going to double it on the back side, and make it just as wide as it is now. Cool. There's a future expansion and post-store facility that we did up there. Maybe <laughs> maybe they could paint something beautiful on inside of the whatever it is. But there's the business office. Um, upper level has got living quarters for drivers. Huh. Kitchen, bathroom, bedrooms, so they can rest in between going out on trips, coming back. So they're new neighbors, temporary neighbors that are at least a little different than the campground. Oh, well, that's way across the street. Yeah, but that was some of the people's concerns that live in that neighborhood were the campers that could be coming to Tillis. But, but yeah, okay, so that's interesting, and. They're not like Mark Keen. They actually get permission to do whatever they're doing. They don't just keep doing stuff. Oh, wait, did I just say that and I'm recorded? Okay, um, no, anyway, no, <laughs> I know there's some developers that just keep doing stuff without getting the proper permits and whatnot, but Glenn's yeah, motor coach has gotten... It's a, it's a B2 service. A B2 service. B2 zoning. Okay. Uh, the building permit's been approved. You saw... Building, I mean, the outside I don't think it's finished yet, but you saw all the windows on one edge, one end, and that's all part of our um, OACC or or local architectural community guidelines or something like that. So, yeah. so much glass, so much brick. Interesting. Okay. Um, all right. So the next thing is um, the DOT information. Can you share no. what you shared with me that um, will update? So, yeah, the month of January, I had like 10 emails back and forth between myself and Heather Lukes, who's the um, 
so executive assistant or something like that to the district manager. So we're going back and forth and we're trying to, right now it's the string of emails. Uh, they were going to go back to the commissioner and um, because those, when Highway 52 was built, was built with bonding bill money. So because of that, they're asking us to buy the land to pay off the money that was built the highway with the bonding bill money. So, but we've gone back with a couple of ideas and suggestions. One is to um, ask if they would clear two things. One, if they donate the land. And the other response is to uh, consider a deed restriction limiting the use of the property to public use only. Um, so that's kind of where it's at right now. They're reviewing it as of January 28th. She came back and said that they were, they're going to review it with her council and at the commissioner's office to see if they would consider a, a deed restriction on the property. And um, so we would have to purchase it for market value. So that they would still be, a, if, if, they, if they don't want to donate it, hope then this yeah. next step hopefully would be that they would make it public access and then it would be worth less on the market. Yeah. Is that the well, not, it's, it's only for public use, yes. What the mean, needs restriction is only permitted for public use. So mean, meaning the, it, it couldn't, it's, people can't put a home there or something. Right, it's landlocked. Yeah. There's no access. Mm -hmm. so. um, and they still agree to put the fence in the whole length of the property. So I just don't understand what their reason is or idea is for us purchasing that. I mean, it was a state bonded bill to put that highway through there. They acquired, yeah, more of our lake bed, and I, 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 I'm sorry, but that just, I, I don't know, that frustrates me. I don't get it. I, I, for the life of me, I'd fight that because I was like, why are we, why do we want to, this losing the dam and the lake and every other doggone thing, I, that, that costs us, you know, I don't know. I just have a hard time with that one, so I just, it, really it, seemed, like that, it yeah. seemed like that. It, it just does bigger. not make any sense to me. I mean, it's, there's they can't use it for anything, no. You know, we and it's stop. like just donate it. And I I thought I could have swore back when we were going through all this that I don't know. Like I said, a lot of the people were gone that were in on that whole transaction and that whole bonding thing. You know, from MnDOT or at least from around oh, here. Yeah. And and and. But there was that one guy, and I or I can't remember his name, and I had it. It might be, it's got to be in somebody's notes, because I I visited with him when it was when when they had the thing up there in Pied Island, uh, open house here. It was about a year, year and a half ago. Something to do with uh, was it fifty two or something? What was that? But anyway, I talked to him and I explained to him, um, and he he remembered it. He was on that and. He said he, he, uh, he yeah, and I just Bill bought those properties. So there has to be money exchanged, I guess, for the bonding bill to be, to make it clear, I guess. So what, what happens if, but if we get a deed restriction on it and no land is bought and it's still the property, but it doesn't have it. Yeah, that's fine. Hopefully that's the best. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. Just as long as we can. So what happens it. if our uncle says, okay, we're not going to pay for it because the land's still going to be there. What happens if, if that's either politically or actually what happens? Well, we probably can't make it a park just because the liability. I mean, it's their liability because it's their fence to keep people off the highway. So, oh, so if we want to make it a park, then we, we don't get much say unless we bought the land. Yeah. Okay. The land's been donated. Well, no. Mm -hmm. Everything but those two peninsulas belongs to the city now. It's transferred okay. to us back in 2018. 2017 by the county. Okay. So the lake bed became our property. That's 30 some acres now. It's all part of Oregon and then, Park. If, and I don't mean to, it's, I'm, who, who will decide this eventually? City Council or? What's that? Who will decide if the land is purchased by Orinoco or not purchased or? Uh, I would imagine they'll come back to a market. Uh, if that's what they do, if they tell us, no, you got to buy it, here's the market value. Us the City Council? The City Council, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 
And I would imagine the market value when it comes back to us is probably a non-negotiable term, but I don't know that. Right. To be determined. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So still moving forward, it's just, you know, you can put stakes behind it. So but sure. Um okay, so I think at this time it would be okay to add that um Excel energy thing that we saw in the newspaper. What so I can read it as once my phone is mm -hmm. right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we had a city meeting and a presentation. You have had a city meeting and a presentation. Yeah, it was on our Wednesday. January agenda. So it wasn't January. Okay. So basically, I've got like six percent left on my phone. The last <laughs> something about a power line from Excel. You're right. And then the last sentence says one of the routes, if chosen, could mean the installation of a new transmission line through the proposed Lake Shady Park district east of Highway 52 in the heart of Orinoco. And I've, I've left out four or five paragraphs. Mm -hmm. Do you know more than this? Yes. Yeah, okay, good. So, um, yeah, this has been ongoing for several months about this power line. It's, it's, a, there's, it's a power line from Mankato all the way to, uh, there's a, just east of the Lake Zumbro area, called a Chester Junction. It's a power line. So it's 160 volt power line, 161 kilovolt. So there's three, there's like four different segments. And um, I think if you go to um, they have a Mississippi or Mankato Mississippi River Project Transmission Line Project, it's out there. If you just Google Mankato Mississippi, it'll pop up, I'm sure. So there's four segments um, of this power line being put in place, and Orinoco Pine Island is in segment number four. Within segment four, there's there's been two different routes. One is a New Haven following coming out of north of Pine Island, coming down the New Haven Township to about 85th Street, and then going east. The other one is through Pine Island down the Highway 52 corridor through Orinoco down to 85th Street. So that, would that be blue, the blue one, the one through from Pine Island? Yeah, yeah, that's the one for, through Orinoco. I know one thing's for certain. I think the city ought to fight that tooth and nail. They don't so, need that. Well, there's, right now. there's some good things that came out of our meeting. So okay. the New Haven is one alternative. The alternative is the blue route. Okay. Which goes uh, through our, our local. Okay. Our local. So um, I invited, they were really the public input is just about the end, but I invited um, Ellen and Randy from the project to come to Orinoco and they gave a presentation um, and a QA uh, about the alternative route through Orinoco. Um, a lot of good comments from the citizens. Um, I've had, I've sent them two or three comments through the previous to the meeting about objecting it to coming down 52 because of our park, the structures, obstructions of the view, it was just a bad idea. Mm -hmm. uh, New Haven Township has done the same thing. They don't like the New Haven Township route either. And they uh, submitted a resolution of having another alternative is to follow the Cap X line, the big power line that's north of us. So they came to the meeting Gave the presentation, we gave them comments. We didn't, we thought there was better alternatives of using the tower on the CapEx line. Because um, right now there's a 340, 345 line and there's a 160 line. Well, come to find out in the meeting was this whole project is to take that 161 kilovolt line, take it off of those poles and go this other route that they're proposing. And so, there was, you know, it was all very cordial. There weren't any yelling or it was all very, you know, very respectful and everything. But we just think that there's more opportunities to go down the CapEx line. Well, come to find out, they told us the meeting was that there's a 150 foot right away for the CapEx line. And to do another, to run another power line for the 161 instead of through New Haven or through Orinoco. They could buy another 100 foot easement next to the 150 and they could run their structure down down that 100. They can't because they want to put a second 345 line on that on the current poles there. So 
He said, well, we looked at all the alternatives, but really we just want to, this is our two alternatives. And there's a long process. There's more approval process that has to go through this. It has to go to the state. And you can continue to voice your opinions, and we will. I remember now I got a flyer like six or seven months ago about yep, this. Yeah, yeah, but I forgot all about it. Yeah. yeah. So there was like eight or nine comments in addition to my two or three that people had already commented on already. So, so the word is out there that we didn't care for. But a week and a half later after the meeting, um, the gentleman from New Haven Township, Dale, I think his last name, he's a supervisor that was here at the meeting and he shared his comments. He shared the idea that they should a resolution. And um, so he gets an email back from Ellen, one of the two people from visited us. And she says, well, based on all the comments from the city of Orinoco and the township and all the different resolutions have been passed, we are going to look at another alternative route as following the CapEx line. So that was the first time they've admitted it, that they could consider doing that. And that goes, I think, well, north of Rochester. It's north of Orinoco. Well, it's it's just, it's, yeah, it's the big one, yeah. That would be the smartest thing, in my opinion. I mean, they oh, the, yeah. Yeah, just extending a little bit more right away and then, like I said, you can take that off. You can put another 345 on those giant structures. You've got it right there. And the guys, the, I don't know, you've already, you've, there's already access to every one of those poles. Yeah, exactly. it's it's, so, yeah. So yeah. The, the, the thing they told us at the meeting was that it was expensive to run another line across Lake Zumbro. Mm -hmm. We're kind of going away with it. We can go all these other distances and go all these other distances, <laughs> but you can't go a thousand yards across the river, across the lake. So it's as, the, that, as, the, as the crow flies, is, is more difficult than yeah. Sort of, yeah, okay. No, go not. So anyway, um, as I say, so, so we they came back and told us, okay, we're, we'll look at this other alternative. So that's good. So we can. We got to keep still pushing. Okay. Yeah. And we're so going to do a okay. We're doing a resolution ourselves. Uh, the council with our February meeting to um, say that we approve uh, the uh, alternative route along CapEx. Okay. And we really can't say it's a bad project. All we can just is suggest a resolution to consider the CapEx one. Right. And that just seems like if they, because if they've been in another line, they'd have to do probably a whole other right of way. Oh, no, they would. Yeah. Which, yeah. I mean, okay, thank you. Th for those residents have all been. They've gone through the process and there's not that many homes. There's a few homes that gets pretty close, but that's we'll have to work those details. So pretty well, much you just yeah. kind of go through the fields. It just seems like going through a city, especially a small city, is not probably like the city. I don't yeah. know. Just, so we can so we they'll keep us in uh, update with the schedules of going through the process of going forward and We'll continue and, to speak in favor of the capex. And is that when you say to keep you up to date? It, how can we, as park board members, be? Uh, I'll follow the website. The Minnesota. Yeah. Okay, I'm in Cato, Mississippi. One. In Cato, Mississippi. Yep. Yeah. When was capex 2020 in 2020? No. And what does the 2020 stand? When did capex come through? Um, well, it, it was being built. Well, that, that was before before COVID. Yeah. Well, they, so the 2020 didn't really mean the year 2020, right? Well, right. I think by 2020 they were going to have it all. They had it all completed. Right. Yeah. Okay. But I think it was because it was the last couple of years I was working before I retired in 2020. They were they were building. Yeah. yeah. That was that was a big deal. But you weren't here yet. Well, I'm. You know, Rochester Ooh. talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, okay. a lot of prairie people talked about it because it was going through prairies. Well, that's true. I think it'd be perfect for a prairie. <clears throat> okay. Right. Okay. All right. So that's still in the works. Didn't it even say something about how, it, like, like you said, it's still in the process yeah. and still has to have community. I think input. right now the process is twenty four through twenty twenty four. Maybe I think the construction is twenty twenty six. Okay. So there'll be more more approvals through the years. So. Right. Okay. All right, so since I don't have actual agenda, um, an update for age-friendly Orinoco is that we did get 
what official designation? Is that what you would say, Ryan? Yeah, we got that last year, uh, hanging in the hallway, the certificate. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And um, H Friendly has a resource uh, April 20. Oh, yeah, that's right. 24th, I think. And we're going to invite all these, all the senior services offers that offer the that offer their service for 55 years old and a, uh, age and older. That's going to be at the schoolhouse events building. So that's that's just across to. the river over here. That new, that new, old, new old building. Wow. What? How do yeah. you say that? <laughs> it is called schoolhouse something? Schoolhouse events is what it's going yeah. to be called. Ah. So we'll have um, family services, Pine Island Home Services, uh, Elder Network, I don't know, yeah, just we're, a whole we're plethora of uh, agencies that put your wheels on wheels. And... Did you say April 24th? Don't quote me on that. Oh, don't quote you. I don't remember either. Let's see if I get on my calendar. Because I, the February, well, maybe it is April 24th. No, that's a Wednesday. Um, I'm sorry, I just that's okay. I'll cross out 24th. February 24th, February 27th. Um, going back to the EDA, we're having a media engagement um, public meeting here at City Hall where we'll continue that activity of identifying citizens' input for parks, housing, how we want downtown developed. Basically, it kind of covers everything that was in the survey, but it brings people out uh, to here so we can um, I think what we'll end up doing is that there'll be a two by three post-its around the room and um, there'll be small table discussions. And with post-its, you can go up and put your ideas on these different uh, domains um, as we continue to gather more input for the community engagement planning. That's on February 27th at 6.30. And so that would be to kind of update the comprehensive plan? That's where the information will be used for you. Right. It goes towards EDA development, but also towards, it can be used towards a comprehensive plan update too. Because it's right now, it's 2006. Is, yeah. It's the current and it's all predicated on the sewer for a lot of the activities. And of course, now that that's going to be in place in March and April, we can move forward with our development like we like we're starting start to see already. So, what time was that? One well, six thirty. Six thirty is the twenty fourth. Twenty seven. Twenty seven. Is that here? Yeah. That's our normal EDA night, and so we'll just have it that. Okay. That's our meeting night. Is. Well, and has there been any update with the Hamilton Group over there? Has there been any update with the Hamilton Group? that's been interested in the landover? Um, no, they'll be, I think they're giving a presentation this Thursday night at uh, PNZ or an update on where they're at. I don't know if it's anything to vote on. I think it's just to, to continue to refine the uh, concept drawing of how they're between single homes, twin homes, and- I know that's the apartment. But they're still balancing those things. Where are they looking at that at? So the open land just north of the gas and go. Mm -hmm. They're looking at buying that. It's, a, it's an estate. Uh, 43 acres, it kind of wraps around Ross Parker's home. Yep, yep, yep. So that's Hamilton is, Hamilton was a real estate, but they've decided to become the developer. Oh. And so they're, they've come to PNZ with a concept. First one was with a single family, Twin homes and apartment complex that didn't go anywhere. So now they came back with the second one of, of um, the homes to the very east, like across the street where Cedar Woodlands is at now. Those would be big lots mm -hmm. uh, directly on that street. And then behind that would be uh, smaller lots of single family and then twins and quads. And now I think they've they're still continuing to tweak that. Maybe more single family but less twin homes, I guess. So. But, 
We're going to give an update Thursday night. Okay. But I don't. I don't think it's going to. It's. I don't think it's starting the process yet of uh, preliminary plat and those type of things or development agreement. Those are. This is still just a concept. We need one of those over by my place so I can get out of my neighborhood in more than one place. What's that? I said we need some development over by me so I can get out in more than one place. Well, that, but it'll come with time. It'll come with time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. So can we do, let's do the budget thing right now, because maybe that'll answer my question if we have money for trees. So I have this version and Rylan has a different version that he's going to pass out. Um, well, this is, I pulled this off the main stretching for parks and rec. And um, at the bottom on the page, you'll see some highlighted ones where we took some accounts from other department and kind of lumped them into parks and trails. Um, and he went through them and he thought that it was better to show some items in, under parks and recreation. Um, some work at the very bottom, there was where it says from grounds. We kind of consolidated a couple departments. So there's um, there's wages that come from cane, you know, for mowing. So there's there's um, the very top. There's wages. You'll see insurance, workers' comp, <coughs> electricity in the middle there, line three forty seven. Um, whole bunch of now there's R and M for buildings and equipment. Um, for mowers, general equipment, recreational activity. And over on the far right, you'll see what was budgeted last year and um, what was um, actually used. So some of them look like a lot. I don't know, it's confusing. Yeah. <laughs> Like park insurance was twelve hundred, but then they didn't spend any money on it. Which line? For yeah, is for nine hundred dollars for water, sewer, and garbage, but it turned into almost five thousand dollars. Mm hmm. Wow. Okay. The budget was nine hundred, but the actual was close to five thousand. Interesting. And some of that, I think, is um, that some of that. You have bathrooms at every park now. Uh, just excuse me. Just the um, the restrooms at Orin Oakle Park, but they'll be they'll be shipped over to um, part of the sewer system. Yeah, but I mean, as far as renting the uh, uh, ones for like down in. Oh, porta potties. Park, porta potties, yeah. yeah. Porta potties will still have those. Uh, yeah, but I mean, then, would some of that money be part of that that's in it here? It could be, yes. I, yes. I would think contract, yeah. <clears throat> For the <laughs> rental and also the servicing of it, too. So, the one thing, the recreational activities, um, if we decide to use, uh, do a, a music in the park again, that's where those funds would be used. And that might be on your agenda, too, a little bit later. What, where would tree planting come in? Well, there is a tree budget. Is that well, somewhere else? I didn't print that off. Okay. But there's tree removal. I don't know if there's any EAB. I could have printed that off too. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't do that. Well, uh, it, it all looks like gobbledygook to me, but that's okay. Um, yeah, there's a lot of expenses that we don't follow, have any influence on. We meeting Parks and Trails. Park Trails City Council. I would say Parks. What's that? Right? You're saying Parks doesn't really have any control over the budget? A lot of well, I'm, I'm, What I meant was that there's a lot of these activities that we don't touch. 
in our really it's, it's salaries, it's insurance, electricity. Oh, right, they're, they're givens, but um, I guess one thing I know we're going to be talking about that uh, potential planting with um, assistance from wild ones, it may not cover 100%. So, you know, if some of that budget would come out of the free if, if it goes that much, would yeah, that, you know, but so and that that's might... information we can't see on here, like our tree budget and the, the EAB stuff. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's the part I didn't, I didn't print okay. that off. But maybe next month? I'll pull that off and we can. Because there's tree remover. I don't know if there's EAB. I thought there was, but let me. Did we ever get a conclusion on the EAB? So it has to be done by this following summer, the EAB. So Kane is still on top of that, hopefully. I'm assuming he is. I can't really. Wait. I don't know. We, we've not heard any. I mean, it's, we haven't heard anything, whether it's all completed or not done at all or in the middle. And I, I, yeah. I'm not, I think there's just been a lack of communication loop. Well, there's a study that's going on with some trees, you know, that from a, some university was doing a tree study. Oh, yeah. But it, but I meant here in Rochester. I'm sorry, Mark. Mm -hmm. Sorry, not Rochester. I mean, I can ask Kane. If, I mean, I think this, we went around with Dana around like in circles and like, said, can someone reach out to Kane and ask him? I mean, I can or somebody else can. No, he's okay. You don't even see him across the street. I do. Yeah, yeah. No, it's easy. I just don't want to step on anybody's toes. Oh, no. But I also sort of don't like, we still don't know. <laughs> yeah. And you could even just email him too. Yeah, I'm going to see him tomorrow, I think. Anyway, but sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you see him tomorrow, that would be so great. Just and then just on. let us know. Yeah. Okay. Like then, if he has trees ordered, where he's going to put them, stuff like that. Park, park committee representative, you like a yeah, PR. Park, what did you say? Park, <laughs> representative, park committee representative. Yes. What what does R and M stand on stand for? Recreation and maintenance. R and M on uh, here. Place and uh, oh, replace and, and maintain. Maintain. Yeah, repair me. I like my word. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. So next then is um, the community center. So I printed this out. Um, Wild Ones is an organization that Don is involved in, and it says in a newsletter. Um, Member Don Littleton has initiated native garden plantings by the Orinoco City Hall. Our Southeast Minnesota Prairie Partners Board voted to offer plants and money to help her with it. Don is putting in two native beds. One is three by three feet I, by I, twenty feet. I Go wouldn't. Ahead. I wouldn't. Um, I don't. That's. I think I've already put that in. Whatever. I wouldn't. I don't know that that part is is true. That might not be accurate. Yeah. But um, this was written like six, six months ago. <laughs> Oh, and then was printed in December. You remember when I? Yeah, it was written yeah. a long time ago, and I and she just she was she couldn't wait for photos and just anyway. Go ahead. So it says that, um, so the three feet by twenty would be out front here, I, and then the eight by twenty. Is well, I still don't have the dimensions. My oh, the okay. idea is, and this came kind of from last year when um, I said, "Can I just put in natives?" And people were like, "Okay." Um, so then, Bar Boland and Wild Ones is a um, not for profit organization that really encourages people to use native plants in landscaping. And most of my experience is native plants in prairies, which are very different. So landscaping is when it's like meant to look like somebody did something with it. So um, she, so Barb Boland, so she, well, you nudged me, and then I called Barb Boland, and then I, she's going to her, so first of all, they'd like to give anywhere between 250 and $500 in support of plants. They also want to grow a whole bunch of plants. So there's, there'll be no charge for if all the things work out well. I'm thinking something very simple, like two or three species, but she's, Barb wants me to meet with Pat Johnson, who is a design consultant. I mean, no, no charge, but um, what I'm thinking of is the, the east, south, and north planting beds. And thinking of things that are, that will be like, to me, they have to be pretty much, not maintenance free, but very low maintenance. Um, so, you know, I'm thinking of like, um, Indian grass and, and butterfly baby, and I expect this person will have more imagination than that. Um, and then also maybe for gold rush, 
because that's in the, like in the third week end of August to have hopefully like maybe some yellow like um, yellow flowers blooming at that time for you know kind of a gold rush feeling. I don't know what she'll suggest, but I think um, I'm going to meet with her on Tuesday up in Northfield, and um, so and then Barb and I'm sure you guys when and it, it doesn't have to be just me. I mean I'm welcome more the more brains the better, um, but I can bring back what Pat Johnson is recommending in terms of design of plantings and um in my mind it, you know one of the things is that they they do the first like year or two they need to be well watered but after that they should kind of take care of themselves with some weeding and then some either cutting back um probably in the spring of each year and hopefully um, and some weeding but hopefully that will be that much yeah so um and then that you know that's besides looking somewhat natural but but defined or and civilized it should also be very good for like you know butterflies and bees and that kind of thing okay so i will bring i'm meeting with her next tuesday anybody is welcome to join me and then i will whatever i'm I, i'm asking kane tomorrow for um he said he'd give me the measurements he hasn't yet he's been too busy but he's i'm going to ask him for or i've already asked him for like a long tape measure not if i'll just measure the beds Oh, okay. Yeah, because you don't have one of those. It got broken. Aww, <laughs> so it won't work very good. It's broken. So, yeah. No. Okay. So, he's going to help you measure. That's awesome. Well, I think he'll, he'll give you I the measure. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, but, you know, I'm, cool. I'm welcome any um, feedback, et cetera. And it'd be great to get this started, you know, as soon as possible, which probably means like April, May, June. Wouldn't it be amazing if at least two plants came back? One that we planted last. Oh, I think we will. But I don't think. Ah, all right. Okay. So. So this would come to council then. What well, one? Yeah, yeah, I think we have to get to a point where we're thinking about how much money the city would need to support it. Does that make yeah. sense? Well, I think just the plan itself, <laughs> and any costs associated with it. Yeah. I think they would appreciate knowing too that sure. salt yeah. is free and whatever. Yeah, and I think that Kane and the maintenance department would want to know, you know, they're the ones that mow kind of by there, and and I don't know what kind of herbicides or anything they use, and how far they need to stay away, different odds and ends things. So, it's just a good thing to keep Kane and the um, crews and sure. And I, I mean, he yeah. knows what I'm doing. I don't know uh, if he knows all of this, sure. but I can, but could I can be sure to talk to him when I talk to him tomorrow. Um, they did. She did say that probably Wild Ones, what she called national, the national organization, will probably want to put up a sign saying what a net, what, what a native, and the logo. And she said want. I don't know that it would be required. The logo would be something like this echinacea. It may Does look that like, mean we should plant echinacea? We should plant echinacea. Yeah. Um, uh, anyway, yeah. so I think that's it. I hope I haven't left anything out. Um, but I'm thank you for nudging me like in what late January or something like Dawn. How's that going? Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so it's a matter of figuring out what kind of funds we would need to support it and what funds they're willing to put into it. Yeah, and, up to yeah. up to five hundred dollars between two fifty and five hundred, and they, it's it's a little bit loosey goosey because there's I guess there's not I don't know why it's loosey goosey, but it's they want to contribute some. And it'll it would be no more than five hundred. And do you know anyone in the area that's involved with wild ones that would help us? Or I know, right? You know? Um, hopefully volunteers. Um, I don't know anybody because um, this actually this they're trying to kind of make come further south. Um, there's people in Rochester who are members, but it's this is based in Northfield. Oh, it is based in Northfield. Yeah, neat. So okay. you mean for volunteers? <laughs> Just anything. I don't know. I'd help out with that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we would help with this. Like here and here, initial here. here. Spot and print. No, that'd be great. And uh, that, I think it'll be like, you know, just a lot of work over like two or three days and then just make sure it gets water. Hopefully, we won't have another drought this year. Yeah. Although, they, when I put in some um, little side oaks, grandma, they, it's a little grass. And it was so, I mean, it's like so hot. It's like, oh, I haven't been able to water as much as I wanted to, but it, it's still flowered and it's like, oh, hot heat. And it's like, go, you go, little guy. Anyway. I love it. 
All right. So for Alice Park, we're still thinking about doing some garlic mustard removal there. Yep. And, and then, um, so you, you know, when, like probably April. Yeah, right. Isn't it April? Usually, but hopefully not on a night when everybody else is doing something. Why does it say early spring before the 1st of June? But you're saying April is a possibility? Whenever, yeah. Well, because it's tall. I mean, by, by early June, it's tall. And then just easy to pluck out. So it would be April or May? Let's say later May. And I hope I'm here. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So we'll be keeping that in mind. And will um, you look for a date when uh, hopefully a non competitive date? I don't know how to do that. What do you when mean? This, well, when like what other meetings? Yeah. There was like a open house or something right. that we didn't know about ahead of time. Right. So maybe the new administrative person would know the calendar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Previous, for, go ahead. Sorry. You see, foresee this year being kind of a lighter year for that since we've done that two or three, the third year now. Um, apparently, they they are viable for up to five years. So hopefully, yes. But if there's a new if if crop if um three year viability is in in is in vogue this year, then there'll be more. But hopefully, um, I'm hedging my bets. But hopefully, yes. <laughs> no, we kind of discussed that if we had ever seen this at any of the other parks besides Alice Park, we talked about that kind of briefly. And I don't know. Has anybody? Yeah, we talk about we should keep an eye out for it. Yeah. No, and I and the, us um I think it was like Lance went above and beyond a couple of days mm -hmm. last year too. So I know we couldn't make it that one night. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. All right. And not to change the subject, but is the park up there on by the church? Is is that still the one full of oak trees? Mm -hmm. Cowden, is that still at one time, I thought I heard it, and I don't know that, that you were in a, interested in letting that go or something, but I could be wrong. There, the family had reached out, I believe. Okay. And it was pretty quiet, but Cowden family reached out to make yeah, it back. It's a public park, so we couldn't touch it. Right. Chief. To develop it or something like that. Well, yeah, something. I just yeah, heard no, something rumblings, and I didn't know if that. Or it, even just put a house on it. Right. Something I don't know what it was that I had heard. It was kind of floating around, and I thought, "Well, I just check." And but uh, the city has obviously not done anything. They right. maintained it. I don't think we can keep it or the park. Yeah. What park is this? Up on the hill behind the church. Yeah. 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 Y
sometime in July or August, probably. Yeah. And I need to reach out the the couple that is in part of those groups that I have last year. They're on a, a week long anniversary trip, so I'll contact them next week and see what dates are open. I think the sunny night was still a good night. And I have names of two people or two groups, or whatever that um, they might be interested in, you know, kind of a community music. If, if you're looking for more names. Okay, that's cool. You can just get an idea what they charge. Is it a group or individual? One is an individual and one is a group. I will find out what they charge. Okay, because I had one person reach out to me that plays at um, assisted living and nursing, just one guy. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how well that would go over for versus a group, a band, that type thing. Well, I just I'll find out just in case, and um, yeah. you know, keep her toss. Would, would you prefer I didn't ask this these the the single person? It doesn't hurt to get the information, does it? Her future. Sure. I mean, you can look anybody up on YouTube and listen to the music on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. We have some way. They have music out there on YouTube. They could share with us. They kind of give us an idea too. Duke. All right. What did you say last year it was classic brass uptown? Uh, jazz. Uptown jazz and triple berry pie. Oh, yeah. The three yeah. girls, the three ladies. There was only two, but there are three in the whole group. So we listened to them. They were down at um, the brewery by the Quick Trip. By Ron, what did the bands charge last year individually? What's that? What did the bands charge last year individually? Um, remember? 500. Let's see. Um, Uptown Jazz was 500, Triple Bay Pie was 200, and Classic Brass Quintet was 350, so that was a 1,050. Now, I don't know if those prices have gone up. So, and, and you were thinking so that leaves us another thousand or something like that. And you thought that would fall under recreational activities? Maybe? Yeah, that's like okay. the fallback would be the miscellaneous, but no, yeah, the recreational is just another. I think that's where oh. we used to. How does that work when something's budgeted, but the actual is more? We just ran over budget. We just figure it out, right? Because then there were so many that were budgeted that came out less. There could have been, you know, we can go into details and look and find out what that $2,600 is used for. Yeah. Okay. Um, we like to stay within budget, of course, so that's that should be our objective. So. Yes. Okay, so previous previous lake bed trails, I think we're just kind of status quo there. Garden Park, we're hoping that that will look good. I would imagine whoever dug everything up over there is responsible to get vegetation back. So I think we're just going to be waiting on that. Um, and then I don't know how to go about getting a process for naming trails and stuff. Well, I was supposed to, and I haven't, but I look at okay. the, the kind of uh, boilerplate of the, what was the citizen? This is Outstanding Sorry. Citizen of the Year. Okay, and that's on the webpage, or I can ask Renee? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can I just send that to you, then I'll come up with just a boilerplate, I mean, a, a, sure. a target for, for you to, um, or, and if you want to give it to the committee, you know, because um, I don't think I'm supposed to send anything to the committee. Is that right? Yeah, I've started to still blind copy stuff to the committee. Yeah, you can send it to me and then I can. But I don't want to go to jail. I don't either. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I wanted to come about music in the park. Um, Sonny Ditchen, Sonny, your previous city minister, sent me an email from uh, uh, Maria. It, it's a, the band called LP and the 45s. 
And uh, Sonny passed this on to me back in, I guess it was May last year. But, um, Maria Hack is the right name, H A C K. I don't know if that was the person you were talking about. No, 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 no. Um, and then uh, these are on Sundays in Sunday uh, evening at seven. Well, we do it in July, those three weekends in July. Uh, we had June, one in June, two in July. June 4th, and then uh, yes, July 23rd, and no. July 2nd, I think. Was it. And then we had root beer floats the last one. That was, that was well received. Okay. And then obviously we don't do August because we're busy enough with Gold Rush. Okay. We don't do August because Gold Rush is... Yeah, we're trying to avoid, avoid Gold Rush. And National Night Out. Yeah. yeah. June and July. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. So, so Riverwood Hills Park was also... Um, I want to say damaged, but messed. <laughs> I don't know. So that'll see some recovery this summer as well. Riverwood Hills Park from the the sewer project. Yeah, the, the, the paved trail off of Vicious Lane. Yeah, that's been repaired. They came back in and oh, okay. tried to repair it. I guess I haven't looked at stuff. it recently, but yeah. yeah, like the vegetation next to it or the blacktop itself. Uh, no, the the blacktop is fine. It was uh, erosion on the side. They came back and. Put some matting down, I think. Okay. So. All right. And then um, Memorial Park, we're pretty satisfied with what's going on there, I imagine. River um, Park, yeah, there's yeah, not much yeah. going on there. They, they, yeah. trimmed, a lot, they tree, uh, trimmed a lot of trees along the trail, the walking trail. They kind of cleared that yeah. up a little bit. Yeah, oh, okay. Good. Look good? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Take the dog down there. What do you think? Does it look good? Yeah, it does. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, is there anything else that we want to talk about today? Or are we good? I'm hoping in 2025 we okay. can start working on paving trails in Riverwood Hills Park. Nice. Oh, the rest of them? Okay. And I think we should be, because right now they'll, so. This summer would be seeding and getting it back to what it was like before, you know, but I would like to, now that we have an EDA, uh, I think that's going to help us uh, put something on their agenda, on her agenda and our agenda to uh, maybe go after some outdoor recreation grants, matching grants, and we can budget for that matching funds if that's necessary, but I really like to get those trails paved and um, even create a path from Mountain View down through that small lot to Third Street, Southwest. Sunny View. Sunny or South or, what's Mountain View? I haven't heard of that. Mountain one. View is between Sunny View and Sunny View goes down. Okay. Then Mountain View goes along that five, six acres that's part of the township. Oh. And it's, there's a, so there's a city easement and then a, a city so lot down to Third Street. That by is the slave and so it's behind that flame, huh? Careful. Yeah, don't hit the camera now. <laughs> Where are we at? Okay, here we go. Oh, here. So don't they call it third avenue too? Why am I having? Okay, here it is here. So this is city property. There's an easement. So here's this Riverwood Park, yeah. Riverwood Hills. Over here to just this lane. Come down through here, winds through the park, follows up here, comes up through here, and then would jump over. And there's an easement down through these between these two properties. And this is a city lot down here, down to Third Avenue. And the idea is just so right now it'd be streets to get down to 12th street down to here and then lake shady 
avenue goes down here and then we can pave this under the bridge of this here. And then we can start working on the trails through the park here. Hey. This, this is where that bridge is at, which is in a master plan that you guys were working on back mm -hmm. in 2010. <laughs> so it's kind of a, a big project, but I think that's something we ought to start working. We know we're a, we're a bedroom community for the most part with commercial development here and a little bit downtown, but I think we really need to enhance our parks and access to the parks too. So. Why? Why do they have the old stuff here? Well, this is that's it's all. Those are the lots that were part of the peninsulas. Yeah, I remember. That's what MnDOT bought or bought all these properties, and that's what we're talking about getting an agreement to get a contract by deed to use for public wow. purposes because this all belongs to the city now. All of this, yeah. except for these two little outcroppings here. I do find it very interesting that. This was in 2021, but this hasn't had, well, I guess it's not showing it connecting. So that's just water that backs up, not showing it connecting. Yeah, it's just. But the goals are there still, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what this. You're saying something over here is called Mountain View? Well, this is, okay. So this is Township. This is Mountain View, I think, right here. Think Your sunny view. It's still sunny view though, isn't it? Sunny. They're all sunny view. It's no, they're, is there a mountain view? I, I would hope view. there's a mountain view, but do you remember it being mountain view when you were working? Uh, that doesn't people? bring a mountain view, but valley view. Valley. There you go. That's better. Valley view. Okay, here's the street or valley. Right there. Yeah. Uh, valley. There you go. Mountain looking through the valleys. You know. Yes, yes. Valley view. Okay. Well, that's cool. That'd be good. Connect that a little bit. Okay, 2025. All right, I make a motion to be done. That's not right. I second the motion. We're adjourned. <laughs> All in fan discussion. All right. in favor. Bye. 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 Thanks, everybody. You guys, see you all March 6th or 5th or whatever I wrote down. Well, which one is it? I know. Spring. Four. Sorry, because there's leap year. March what? Four. Thank you, Don. We'll see you later. March 4. All right. That's going to come fast. Yeah, especially with February being uh, long, mostly still. warm as of now.